Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Corp. Starting today, Emu Deck for Windows has been released as a public beta. Previous to that, it was under early access under Patreon, but now it's open for everybody. And so I thought it was a great time to do a new video about it. And so in this video, we're going to talk about Emu Deck and all of its features, and then also do a full installation guide. So this should be an A to Z video in terms of getting this set up on your Windows machine. So if you're looking for a very easy way to set up emulation, this is going to be your ticket right here. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, to start, let's talk about what Emudeck actually is and how this might improve your emulation experience. And this tool has been around for about a year and a half at this point. It got its start as a Steam Deck tool, but obviously now it's moved over to Windows. And with the new public beta, you'll be able to throw this on any Windows machine you have. That could be a desktop, a laptop, or even a handheld PC. And in order to really understand what Emudeck can do for you, I think it's worth going over what your typical emulation setup process is going to be on Windows. And to give you the most bare bones example, you'd have to go onto the internet and then find and download the emulator for whatever system you want to try. We're going to do Nintendo GameCube right here. So after you've gone and Googled it and figured out that Dolphin is the correct emulator, you would then have to install that program. And then once you open it up, you'll have to do all sorts of configurations to get everything to work in the first place. Number one, you'll have to point it to your ROM library to make sure that it can find your games. And then you'll also have to go into the emulation properties and click around to just make sure everything is tweaked just so. And then of course, in order to actually play these games, you'll have to configure your controller to make sure that all the buttons are going to work properly. And depending on your overall knowledge of how to work with emulation, this might be a very easy process or it might be a little bit of an uphill battle. Anyway, once you've got that set up, you'll have to make a shortcut to be able to access that emulator and then you'll have to periodically keep it up to date. And so that's how you would quickly set up and maintain one specific emulator. Now, of course, if you want to play more than one system, you'll have to do that for all the other emulator options you have out there. And depending on how far in the weeds you want to get with emulation, this might be a little bit intimidating. After all, you may just want to be able to play your old games and not really want to put that much work in. And I think that's where Emudeck as a tool really shines because it takes care of a lot of that extra work for you. So for example, once you've got it set up, you can go into Emudeck and manage all your emulators all in one space. This will include things like resetting the configurations, updating the emulator app, or even just uninstalling it if you don't want to use it. In addition, you have all sorts of other configuration options all within a single tool. So if you want to change out the aspect ratio, or you want to add or remove bezels, or you want to add LCD shaders, you can do all that here. There's also a tool to adjust the emulator resolution. So if you want to play all these games upscaled to 1080p or all the way up to 4K, you can make all these settings tweaks right here. And then finally, the most important feature of Emudeck, at least for me, is the fact that it'll integrate into your Steam library. So for example, if you're using Steam Big Picture mode, you'll be able to see all of your regular PC games, but then you can also tab over to your non-Steam collection and then access all of your games directly here within this interface. And of course, I'm going to walk you through this entire setup in this video. And in addition to integrating with your Steam library, you can also use front-end launchers through Emudeck, including Emulation Station and Pegasus. This will allow you to manage much larger libraries without cluttering your Steam OS interface. And so we'll walk you through all of this in this video too. And so for me, this is the magic of Emudeck. Once you download and install this one app, it's going to be able to install all of the other emulators, and then it'll pre-configure all the settings and all the controller mapping. And it'll also organize your ROM and BIOS locations and integrate with your Steam library, and then also provide access to alternative front-end launchers. Anyway, I think it's pretty clear on why Emudeck is such a useful resource for most people, and so let's jump into the installation process now. Now first, we're going to go to emudeck.com, and if you want to read more about it to be able to see what other features are available beyond what I've just mentioned in the video, you can see them here. But of course, we're just going to jump directly into the installation. So we're going to click on this download button, and then as of today, we have four different OS options. On the far left, we have the Steam Deck, and then the two in the middle are going to be for desktop Linux. But of course, the one we're focusing on in this video is going to be for Windows, so that's going to be on the far right. Now when you click on it, at least as of today, it's going to give you a quick disclaimer, and that's just because the Windows version is still in beta. So because this is still pretty early in the development cycle, I would expect a couple bugs here and there. So let's go ahead and move on and actually download the file. And so this is what the file is going to look like when you first download it. Let's go ahead and double click on it to start it up. And right off the bat, I'm going to warn you that there will be a couple weird things happening as you first install it just because Windows is kind of funky to work with. So for example, it doesn't recognize the app. And so you have to go into more info and then select run anyway. 
and you might get a couple other pop-up warnings, I would just click through each of these. Now another step in the installation process is that it has to check whether or not Windows Store is completely up to date. So there's going to be an option where you hit to continue and it's going to bring up your Windows Store. And all you have to do here is once you're on the home page, click on the library button. And then on the top right, it's going to have an option to get updates. And this is simple, just follow through the prompts and update all of your software. Anyway, once that's done, you can close out a Microsoft Store and it's going to bring up that command prompt again. And it's probably going to automatically detect that you're good, but if not, just press enter within the command prompt. From there, it's going to install a couple other smaller apps, and these are all necessary in order to install the various emulators for Emudeck. And so again, just go ahead and follow through all of the prompts and you'll be good to go. And after all of that backend stuff is done, it should start the installation process of Emudeck itself. And you'll be good to go once you see this Emudeck loading screen. However, like I mentioned, the Windows version is still in beta, so you might run into some bugs, especially during this step. And if you do, I recommend going to the Emudeck wiki page. I'll have this link down below. And I found that most of the solutions when it comes to installing on Windows can be found under the Known Issues Emudeck for Windows section. Within here, there's a list of different installation issues. And so if you run into any of these problems, then I think these solutions are going to be right here. So I would recommend trying one of these out. And if all else fails, then I would try restarting your computer because sometimes that has worked for me. Anyway, let's just go ahead and assume that you got through the installation process and move on to the rest of the setup. Now to start, you're going to have the choice between easy and custom mode. Easy mode is just going to do everything for you, but we're going to do custom mode because it does give us a few options to work with. On the next page, it's going to show all the places you can install Emudeck. My computer has three hard drives, that's why you see them. But you could also use something like a flash drive or a microSD card, depending on what type of Windows machine you're running. Anyway, once you've picked your drive, let's go to the next page. And here it's going to ask what kind of device you're using. And there are quite a few Windows-based handhelds that have specific configurations, but if you're not using one of those, for example, just a generic Windows PC or handheld, those are available as well. For me, I'm just using a desktop PC, so I'm going to choose that. On the next page is a list of emulators and tools that Emudeck will install. And by default, a bunch of these are selected, but if you don't want to install any specific emulator, you can unselect them here. And you can always choose to install one of these later, so it's not a big deal what you choose right now. On the next page, it's going to show all the emulators and tools and ask you which ones you want pre-configured. And because all the configuration files are super tiny, I just leave all of these selected. After that, we have a bunch of different configuration options, starting with autosave. This means that when you close the game, it's going to save it, and then when you load it back up, it's going to go right back to where you were. Now on the next page, we can enter our retro achievements information. And this is a really fun tool, and you can sign up for it for free on retroachievements.org. Anyway, once you've signed up, it'll give you a username and password, and you can enter it here, and now you can earn achievements for all your retro games. Our next configuration is whether or not we want game bezels for any of these specific retro systems. And this will be great to cover up the black bars if you're playing a system that maybe ran at an original 4x3 aspect ratio. Along those same lines, on the next couple configuration screens, you can change the aspect ratios for certain systems. There's a lot of debate about which one is best for each of these, but personally, I like to keep everything at 4x3. However, if you're interested in using widescreen hacks or something else along those lines, you have all the options right here. And finally, the last configuration changes you can make have to do with shaders. This can do things like apply an LCD grid or a CRT look to each of your classic systems. And bear in mind, you can also turn these off at any time, and I'll show you how to do that here in this video. Now on the next page, we're going to choose different front ends for your Windows machine. We have three different options now. By default, I would recommend using at least the Steam library and one of the other two. The Steam library one is going to be more curated, so that's going to be all the games that'll show up in your Steam interface. And then within Emulation Station and Pegasus, you can have your entire collection. So that way you're not going to be cluttering up your Steam interface, but you'll still have access to all your games. And for this video, we're going to choose Steam and Emulation Station, and we'll configure both of these. And then on the next screen, you can choose your default Emulation Station theme. The ones that actually come out of the box are great, but if you want to change it to something else, this is where you would do it. And then finally, our last configuration page is going to be the different resolutions. By default, everything will be set up for a 1080p upscale just as a standard resolution. However, if you do have a more powerful computer, you could set some of these up for a 4K instead. Anyway, once we've chosen all these different configurations, it's time for the full installation. And this will take a few minutes because it's going to go through and find all those different emulators you chose and then download them and install them onto your computer. And there's going to be a couple times during the installation process where it's going to ask you to confirm installing other programs. This is part of the emulation installation process, so I would recommend choosing Yeah Man, I want to do it. Anyway, once that's done, you'll get a pop-up screen talking about controller configuration. Essentially what they're saying here is you need to make sure that you launch all your games via Steam to make sure the controls work. And after that, we're pretty much good to go. It's going to give us the option to open Steam ROM Manager and install our games, but we're not quite there yet. We need to actually add the games to our computer first. Let's do that next. 
So the first thing you want to do is go to whatever drive you decided to install Emudec on. For me personally, I chose my D drive. That's because it has a bunch of space and I'm going to move all my ROMs onto it. And now when I open up that drive, you can see I have a folder named Emulation. And you'll have the same with whatever drive you chose for Emudec as well. And when you open it up, you're going to see a bunch of different subfolders. The two we're going to focus on right now are going to be BIOS and ROMs. And we'll start by talking about the ROMs. This is going to be the actual game files you'll need to add to your computer to be able to play these emulators. Now, when you open up that ROMs folder, you're going to see a bunch of different subfolders. And some of these make sense, like they're pretty easy to figure out what system they're for. But some of these other names might be a little bit confusing. And so you might not know which specific ROMs are supposed to go inside. Now, thankfully, there's a really easy way to figure this out. And it all comes back to the emulator wiki page. Over on the left side, you'll see an option for BIOS and ROMs cheat sheet. And this is an entire page dedicated to setting up your games and putting them in the right place. So if you're brand new to emulation, I would recommend reading through this just to get a little bit acquainted with the whole process. But in a nutshell, all you really want to do is go to the various cheat sheets here at the bottom. So for example, under the Nintendo one, you can see that we have five different columns. And each of these columns are going to be labeled by the system or the ROM folder or whatever emulator it's going to use. And then you'll also have a list of all the acceptable file formats for that particular system. And then finally, on the far right side, it'll have a listing of whatever BIOS files are required if you're trying to play any specific system. So in this example, let's look at Nintendo GameCube. You can see the name of the system and then the two folders that are acceptable. And then you can see that it's running using the Dolphin emulator. After that, you can see all the different file types that are accepted for Nintendo GameCube. And you can also see that there are no BIOS files required to run these games. And then finally, if you're looking for more information than this cheat sheet, on the left side, you will have a listing of all the different emulators. And so if you wanted to click on the Dolphin one to learn more about the GameCube emulator, you'll have all the information you need right here. Either way, I think this is a great example of how Emudec really takes care of you when it comes to setting all this stuff up. It has a lot of information if you need it, but it also makes it a very simple process to install. And so going back to that original ROM folder, each of these different subfolders are going to pertain to a different system, and you just need to add your ROMs here. And then of course, of course, if you don't know which ROMs to add to which folder, I would recommend checking out those cheat sheets. Now, the other question I get all the time is, OK, where do I find these ROM files? And number one, these are copyrighted files, so I'm not going to share them. But there are a couple tools within the Internet that are pretty handy. Now, it might be bold of me to say because we just met, but you're probably a pretty smart person. After all, you're watching one of my videos, which means that I bet you can figure out where to find these ROM files. You just need to find the right place to look. It definitely is one of life's great mysteries, but I'm pretty sure you can figure it out. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on and actually start moving our ROMs over. And so this is usually what it looks like when I'm setting up Emudec for myself. On the left side, we have a listing of all those ROMs folders we were talking about before. And then on the right side, I have my own personal ROM collection. And so sticking with the theme, let's go to Nintendo GameCube as our example. In Emudec, the ROM folder is going to be labeled GC. And then on the right side, I'm going to go to my own GameCube folder and then find a bunch of games that I want to play on Emudec and then copy them over. And really, the setup process is that simple. You just need to drag and drop your ROMs into those Emudec folders and you'll be good to go. Now, next, I want to talk about BIOS files. These are system files that are required for certain emulators to run properly. And for many of these systems, you don't need BIOS files at all, but there are a couple that do require them. And the setup process here is very similar to how it is when you're setting up your ROMs, but the only main difference is you'll put them in the BIOS folder instead of the ROMs folder. And so here we are with my typical setup. On the Emudex side on the left, I have my BIOS folder open. And then on the right side, I have my own BIOS collection. Now, if you're brand new to emulation, you might be totally intimidated right here because it looks like a completely different language. And so let me break it down for you really quickly. Here's a listing of all the most common BIOS files, and there's a couple things to make note of. For example, on the left-hand column, all of these systems will work with BIOS, but they are completely optional. In fact, adding these will basically just give you a boot logo when you start up your game, and so it makes it a more authentic experience, but it's not necessary to be able to play the game itself. Now, in the middle column, all of these are going to be required to be able to play these systems, but for PlayStation 1 and 2 in particular, there are many different BIOS options available. I'm just giving a couple examples right here. And of course, if you want a full listing of more examples, then I would recommend checking out that Emudec wiki page. Finally, on the far right column, we have have a couple that are highlighted in a different color. To start, when it comes to Dreamcast and Yuzu, these will actually be placed in their own subfolder. So for example, the Dreamcast BIOS file, which is called dcboot.bin, has to go into a folder named DC. And that folder has already been added by Emudex, so you really just have to make sure you put it into that folder that's already been created. 
And the same thing's gonna happen with your switch file as well. It's gonna have to go into the subfolder. And then finally, Neo Geo is a little bit weird because instead of putting the BIOS file in the BIOS folder, you actually put it with all the other ROMs. Anyway, this is a quick listing of all the most common BIOS files that I recommend using. And these are also copyrighted. So you're gonna be on your own to find them and then add them to Emudec. Anyway, that's really about it when it comes to adding ROMs and BIOS files. You're on your own to actually find them, and then after that, you just add them to the corresponding folder. So now let's go ahead and open up Emudeck again. And as part of the installation process, you should now see an Emudeck shortcut app directly on your desktop. And after you open it up, it's going to check for new updates and then bring you to the home page. And so now I want to walk you through the Emudeck interface, which is basically going through all the buttons on the left hand side. On the top is the manage emulator section. Within here is going to be a listing of all the emulators that are supported by Emudeck. And within here, you can choose to update or install or uninstall any of these apps as you want. Also within here are a couple really handy tools. For example, if you want to check out the hotkeys for each of these systems, you can check them here. And so my recommendation would be to open up Emudeck periodically and then go through and update each of these emulators. I would say do it every couple of weeks just to make sure you have the latest and greatest. Now also within here, you have all the other options that we configured previously in this video. So if you want to change out the aspect ratio or the bezels, all these are going to be enabled within the quick settings. And same thing with the resolutions. For example, if you found that some of these are a little bit harder to run in your system than you would like, there's a screen resolution option at the bottom where you can change all these out again. In addition, if you really mess up your settings and you want to go back to how they are by default, you can do a quick reset as well. There's also a couple other handy tools within Emudeck, including one that's called the Emudeck Store. Within here is a bunch of homebrew and demo and freeware games that are available for various systems. So if you want to try out some community-made games, it's pretty cool. You can actually download and install these directly onto your system from here. Also, if you run into any issues when getting all set up, there's a help button as well. This will bring you directly to the Emudeck wiki page, and you can type out your question and it'll usually find the answer to what you're looking for. And finally, one last tool I think is really handy is called the BIOS Files Checker. And this will look through your BIOS folder and make sure that you have the correct file. That way, if it shows up red, that means you know you need to go back and fix it. So that's it when it comes to the Emudeck interface. Now we're going to integrate these games into our Steam library. And to do that, we're going to open up a tool called Steam ROM Manager, which is again a button on the left hand side here of Emudeck. And the way that Steam ROM Manager works is that it's going to look through all your different ROM folders, then find your games and then add them to Steam. However, depending on the amount of games that you've added, you may not want to add every single system. So in this section, I'm going to show you how to curate the Steam ROM Manager experience to make sure that only your very favorite games show up in your Steam interface. To start, there's an option at the top that says Toggle Parsers. And by default, all these are going to be turned on. But what I'm going to do is actually turn them off. And that's because there are only certain systems I want to actually show up in my Steam library. So what I recommend doing here is turning on just the ones that you find the most important. And first of all, I do recommend turning on either Emulation Station or Pegasus, depending on which front end you chose. And for me, I chose Emulation Station, so I'm going to pick that one. Another one that I recommend turning on is going to be the emulators. That means that you'll have buttons to access each of the emulators directly within Steam. So for example, if you wanted to launch Dolphin to get into the GameCube settings without having to actually find it within Windows, I would recommend turning this on. Then after that, I would think about all the systems where you added ROMs and then consider which ones you want to have games actually showing up within your Steam library. So even though I added a bunch of different ROMs to my emulation folders, I'm only going to add a couple here within Steam ROM Manager. And this will be my very favorite systems and games that I want to show up within Steam. Anyway, once you've gone through and chosen all those favorite systems, then you want to select the button on the bottom that says Add Games. From there, click on the button that says Parsers and it'll bring you to this page. And from here, the program's going to look through all of those ROM folders that you selected, and then it'll find your games and then also scrub them against the Steam database. And this might take a couple minutes depending on the size of your library. I have 80 different games here total, and it took maybe about a minute altogether to grab all those assets. Anyway, after that's done, you're going to see a listing of all the games from the systems that we chose previously in that last step. And so the majority here for me are like Super Nintendo, Wii U, PS2, and GameCube. Now it may be that some of these games you want to see within Steam, but others you won't. So I want to show you how to hide some games if you don't want to see them. On the bottom, you're going to press the button that says Exclude Games. And then from there, you just want to click on all the games that you don't want to actually see within Steam. And after you click on it, it's going to unselect it and it'll turn dark. So in this example, I'm just going through all the different games that I have here and then unselecting the ones that I know I don't want to see within my Steam interface. And also bear in mind that by unselecting each of these, it's not going to hide them all together. You'll still be able to access all these games, but it'll be through one of those front end launchers like Emulation Station or Pegasus. 
So really all we're trying to do here is just declutter that Steam interface. Anyway, after going through my 80 titles, I decided that 46 of them I didn't actually want to see. And so now that I'm done, I'm going to press that save button on the bottom right. And here we are, now we have 34 different titles. That includes a bunch of emulators and then all my favorite games. Next, we're going to curate these even more. We're going to make sure that all of the art matches what we want to actually see. And probably the easiest way to do this is to go to each of these games, and if you don't like the artwork, you can actually go left and right to change the different artwork options. And I always find this process to be a lot of fun, so I would recommend going through here, finding each of these covers, and if there's any you don't like, then you can change them out really quickly. Now for some of these other ones, you might have a mismatch. For example, here it's showing the Dolphin Atari 2600 game, but I know this is actually supposed to be my Dolphin emulator. And thankfully it's pretty easy to fix mismatches like this. You just hover over the game, and then on the bottom left there's an option to fix it. And once you click on it, you're going to see a bunch of different options that you can choose from. But as I look through all these selections, I see that the Dolphin emulator is not there. Now this is a problem I've seen many times before, and I know what you have to do is type in the search box, Dolphin, and then within parentheses the word emulator. If you do that, then press the search button, the Dolphin emulator will show up as the first option. From there I can choose it and press save and close, and we are good to go. And then finally, the last step I like to do within SteamRAW Manager is to go up to the Artwork tab on the top right, and then choose the option that says All Artwork. This is going to show all the various assets for each of these individual games. So for example, if there's a banner or a title that doesn't quite match up to what you want to see, you can change them right here. And so this is always the last step I like to do, is just to go through and make sure that everything looks nice and clean. And every once in a while, especially with Nintendo games, you'll find some that are blank, and so it's always good to go through here and find one that works. Anyway, once this is all set up, we are ready to add these games individually into Steam. So once you're happy with everything, we're going to press that button on the bottom that says Save to Steam. And on the top right, you'll get a little window that'll tell you how the progress is going. We're looking for the option that says Done Adding Removing Entries. Once you see that, you're good to go. Now if you happen to miss that because it flashes by pretty quickly, you can click on the Log button on the bottom right, and then scroll down and you should be able to see it here. And once you see that, we are good to go. You can close out a Steam Run Manager as well as Emudeck. And now we can open up Steam itself and then go into the library section and you should see a listing of all those games that we just added. And these are going to show up both in desktop mode of Steam like this, but then also in big picture mode. And honestly, I think they look the best in big picture mode, so let's move over to that. And so we're going to click on that little monitor icon on the top left next to our username. That's going to open up Steam big picture mode. And this will look exactly like how it does with SteamOS on the Steam Deck. And so you can now navigate through all your PC games like it would with any other Steam library. And so all your regular PC gaming stuff is still here and it hasn't been touched. But now let's move over to the other tabs. We'll start with the Collections tab. Within here, you'll see all your different games organized by system. And so if you want to grab all the GameCube games that you added via Steam Raw Manager, they'll be right here. But my favorite tab is going to be the non-Steam tab. That's going to be a listing of all the different games that we added. And sure enough, all 34 games that we included from Steam Raw Manager are now available right here. And the cool thing is that launching any of these games is like launching any other PC game within Steam. And so this is my favorite part of the whole integration, the fact that my very favorite games now show up just alongside my other PC games. Now if this is your first time using Emidec, you're probably wondering how do I get out of a game once I start it? And the easiest way to do that is to hold onto the select button and then press the start button. You might have to do it twice, but either way that's how you close out of a game. And really that's all there is to it when it comes to integrating your favorite emulated games directly into Steam. However, there's still a lot more that we can do, and that's going to be through the Emulation Station interface. And again, this is just going to show up within your Steam interface as an app, so if we open it up, it's going to launch an entirely new front end. And like I mentioned before, this is where your entire collection is going to be. So if there are games that you didn't include within Steam ROM Manager, they're all going to show up here. And this is a really simple and easy to use interface as well. You just pick your system, then navigate through your game, and then launch it from there. And same thing here, if you press select and start, it's going to close out of that game and then launch you back to the Emulation Station interface. So this is a great example if you have a larger collection you want to access every once in a while, but then you want to have all your favorite games within Steam. Now even though Emulation Station on its own is pretty nice looking, there are ways to make it look better. To start, let's talk about different themes. If you press this start button and then go into UI settings, there's an option within here for theme downloader. And this will give you a listing of a bunch of different themes that are available for Emulation Station. And all you have to do is press the A button to download and install any of these. So I'm just going to grab a random one right here and then we're going to back out to that UI settings menu. And now under the theme section, we can choose the various themes that we have downloaded. We'll start with this one here called Electful, it's one of my favorites. And sure enough, yeah, I think this one looks really great, it's nice and clean looking. And I personally love messing around with these different themes just because it can give a nice facelift to your whole experience. 
Let's try a different theme. This is the art book next one. And I think this one is really clean as well and actually is used in a lot of other custom operating systems. Now finally, the other thing you can do to make these even prettier is you can add box art and videos to each of these games. To do that, we're going to do a process called scraping. We're going to press start again to bring up the emulation station menu, and then we're going to go into the scraper section. And to start, you can choose all the different systems you want to scrape. We're going to keep things simple, and I'm just going to choose Nintendo GameCube. And then after that, within the scraper menu, there's an option to add your account settings. And this one's simple to set up as well. You're going to go to a website called screenscraper.fr. And within here, you just want to register for a free account and get a username and password. After you've done that, you just want to go back to Emulation Station, add your username and password, and now you're good to go. Let's go ahead and press the Start button, and then it's going to go through all my different GameCube games, then compare it against the Screen Scraper database, and then as long as it finds a match, it's going to download the box art as well as the video for each of those games. And this might take a few minutes depending on the size of your collection. We're just doing five games here really quickly, so it's not going to take too long. And now as we navigate through our GameCube system, you can see all of the different box art as we scroll through each game. And if we hover over a game for a few seconds, it'll actually bring up a video. So this is really handy if you're not really sure what game to play, but you want to get a quick preview before you choose it. And so really that's Emulation Station in a nutshell. I think this is a really great alternative to just having everything within your Steam library. And I love the fact that we can integrate all of our collection into one single app. Okay, now that we're set up, I do want to talk about a couple additional features available within Emudeck, and these are all available via what they call the Early Access, which is part of their membership perks of being a patron. And right off the bat, there are two features that are pretty handy. The first one is called Boot Mode. This is a tool exclusive within Windows, and this one's pretty neat. What it's going to do is bypass the entire Windows boot sequence and go directly into Steam instead. So this is handy if you're using a computer that's a dedicated gaming machine and you don't want to have to deal with all the Windows setup stuff. Instead, when you power on the device, it'll go directly into Steam and you can start playing your games right then and there. Another option that's been in the works for quite some time now are cloud saves. And this is great if you want to store your save games in the cloud or if you want to use the exact same save between multiple Emudex setups. And then finally, as part of their early access program, they have a bunch of other new features in the works, and they just released a roadmap here the other day. In addition to the cloud sync and boot mode that we already talked about, there's a couple new features that are pretty exciting. For example, they're working on a sync feature between Onion OS on the Mio Mini Plus and Emudex, so that's pretty neat if you have both systems. And they're also working on ad hoc multiplayer, so if you want to play between a Steam Deck and an ROG Ally, you can do that as well. And they're also working on bringing Emudex to other platforms, including Mac and Android. And this process will be pretty similar to how it was with Windows. So if you're an Early Access member, you can try these out and help beta test it with the developer. And then once the testing is complete, it'll move over into public beta like how it is for Windows right now. Either way, if you want to stay on the cutting edge of Emudeck and all the different tools that they're building, then I would recommend checking this out, and I'll leave it all linked down below. Finally, the last note here is that if you want to uninstall Emudeck, it's very simple. There's a button on the bottom left of the app. And so this will clean out all of the emulator apps, but it won't touch all of your ROMs or save files, so you can still access those if you want. And so that's really about it for this video here. I think that Emudeck is a really excellent tool for getting set up with emulation, and I think it's especially handy if you're brand new to all this stuff, but you want to play some retro games without having to figure out all these configuration menus. And I gotta be honest, even for me, somebody who plays with these systems all the time, I still prefer to use Emudeck just because it streamlines the whole process. And of course, I love the fact that it integrates directly into my Steam library, so I can choose between playing a PC game or one of my retro classics and it's all there. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you already tried out Emmy Deck on a Steam Deck, but are you also thinking about trying it on Windows? As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we'll see you next time. Happy gaming.